Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Jessica, and I'm pleased to be your host for today's Get to Know Nutrition and Food session, which is part of Ryerson's virtual open house, which is taking place this week, November 9th to 13th, as well as next week, November 16th to 20th. We have a, uh, Ryerson has shifted to an essential services model to help prevent the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic, which is why we are with you on your screens and not with you in person. We put together a series of virtual sessions in order to share information and connect with you from the comforts of your own home. Ryerson is working diligently to provide students with fulsome experiences while maintaining the health and safety of our communities. There are many sessions taking place across these two weeks, so we encourage you to check out our website and register for any other sessions that, have, that you are interested in too. Now, before we begin, I'd like to start with a few Zoom housekeeping tips. So we encourage you to ask questions throughout this session. At the bottom of your screen, you will see a Q&A option where you can click on this, which will pull up a dialog window. Here's where you can ask questions. We have many faculty and staff members who are here going to be working behind the scenes to answer all of those questions for you. And we'll also have an opportunity to take some of your questions live throughout the session as well. If, you're happening, if you happen to have any audio or video issues, please also feel free to flag that in the Q&A pod and we'll do our best to try and troubleshoot those with you. You can also rearrange your screen any way that works best for you so you can make things bigger or smaller and this won't affect anything that we see on our end. Uh, this presentation is also closed captioned to ensure accessibility. So if you require closed captioning, please select that option at the bottom of your Zoom window. Lastly, uh, as you can notice here, this session is also being recorded. So we will have all of our recordings of our virtual open house available on our website at a later date. Keep in mind that this does not include the Q&A box. So if you happen to get a really great answer from us and you wanna keep it for future reference, make sure you take a picture or a screenshot or copy and paste it to something on your computer so that you can reference it, reference it later on. Uh, now, before we, uh, before we get into the presentation, I do wanna take the opportunity to acknowledge the land that our university exists on. So you will see this on the next slide here. Uh, Toronto is in the dish with one spoon territory. The Dish with One Spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations and peoples, Europeans and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. Now, as much as this session is about us and getting to know Ryerson, we'd also like to get to know some of the people who are joining us today as well. So I'm going to be launching a poll right now and I encourage you to, um, to join in on this poll um, and let us know who you are, whether you're a prospective student or a parent and guardian or counselor. I'll leave this up on our screen for a few more seconds. Um, and then once we get through this poll, what I'll be doing is introducing our speaker uh, to start the presentation. So I'll give about 10 more seconds here. Awesome. So it looks like we have a lot of prospective students who are joining us. Um, so thank you so much for coming in. I hope that you're really excited about learning about all things Ryerson as well as our nutrition and food program. So I'd like to turn things over to Zaina now to uh, take it away. Uh, and Zaina, unfortunately you are muted right now. If you could unmute yourself and then start over. <laughs> now you're good. Excellent. Uh, I said, thank you, Jessica, um, very much. And thank you, everybody, for being here today. This is quite an um, exciting experience. And I'm really um, excited to be here with Bianca Wagen, um, who is our Career Boost student. So she works in our office, as well as a, a current student. And we are going to go over and co-facilitate together some of these agenda items that we're really interested in having you know um, and getting your perspective on what you'd like to know further. So I'm just going to go to the next slide and um, our introductions. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Zaina Alrada. I work in the School of Nutrition as the Promotions Outreach Coordinator. Um, so uh, this time is very exciting for me as we meet you as prospective students um, and then oftentimes meet you as, as current students. So we hope that today will be um, impactful and ask her, uh, answer your questions. And I'm going to hand it over to Bianca to give a little introduction as well. 
Hello, everyone. Um, again, my name is Bianca. Um, as Zaina mentioned, I'm in my second year of the Nutrition and Food Program. I'm also the Communication and Events Coordinator for the School of Nutrition, um, as well as a transfer student from U of T. Uh, and I'm really glad to be here with all of you, and I hope uh, this is a very insightful and informal session for all of you. Thank you. So I think where we are going to start here um, is just to give you a little snapshot of Ryerson University. So many of you may know this, some of you may not, um, but just wanted to put it on the map that at Ryerson, we're a, a large umbrella. Um, and under our umbrella, we have different faculties. Um, so there's a few faculties here that um, you may know about. Our faculty is the Faculty of Community Services. Um, so if you just want to click on to the next piece, we make up of a bunch of schools and um, each one of our schools, it's very small there, but if you zoom in there, um, a community of schools that offer services. And um, we're really proud of all of the schools and we're especially proud of, if you click on to the next um, slide, the School of Nutrition. And then again, Bianca, if you don't mind. So um, the School of Nutrition is one of the schools within the faculty, and uh, this is our mission statement and kind of the, the guiding principle of what today will be about, um, really about explaining the diversity of our curriculum, um, talking about the people that make that happen, and then the way in which you can um, tailor your experience um, to your interests. And, and we want to prepare you to be those uh, responsible citizens in the world. So at a large scope, that's what it is. And if we could go into the next slide, we can go specifically into the School of Nutrition and the Nutrition and Food Program. So um, many of you know, based on your research and what our website has great information on, is that we're a four-year Bachelor of Applied Science. So we are a Bachelor of Applied Science. That's really important to remember. And then within this Bachelor of Applied Science, we're, our focus is nutrition and food. Um, so once we get into the curriculum, you'll see that um, our curriculum is quite diverse and we offer a professional accreditation. So if you so choose, we are one of the three universities um, that are in Ontario that offer the dietetic education program um, uh, academic requirements. So um, that is a, a real accomplishment. I know that's a, a reason why a lot of you are here um, with the hopes of becoming a registered dietitian. And we really wanna highlight that we are industry recognized by a variety of uh, diverse sectors within uh, nutrition and food. So it doesn't just stop at the pathway of dietetics. Um, we have a great presence with the food science, home economics, um, and what used to be the food service um, organization. One thing that I think is important, and a lot of first years want to um, just kind of know, is that we're not culinary arts. That's not our program. Um, George Brown has an amazing, exceptional program with that specialization. Um, and we are um, a Bachelor of Applied Science, so it really has a different perspective. So if you go into the next slide there, I, I just inserted this um, because I really want um, you all to, to take on visiting our website and exploring the people that make up our, our school. Um, we have longtime faculty and contract lecturers that have contributed in community and bring that back to our, our program. Um, and of course, with our staff and support services, Really, there's so many services to support you at Ryerson within our school. So I want to acknowledge that and invite you to explore um, all of our faculty, what they're up to, their research interests, and see what aligns with you. Thanks, Bianca. Um, so I'm just going to take a little pause here and try to get you to imagine that first time you went to the academic calendars, if you're coming from high school, or maybe you're in university and you're you're wanting something more and you open the Ryerson academic calendar and you know there it is it's all of our courses and I highly encourage you to do that with any program you're interested in those are the courses that you'll be living and breathing for your time here 
Um, as a high level snapshot, I just want to mention that, you know, it's a Bachelor of Applied Science and it's split up into sort of three main categories, our required courses, which are nutrition and food and um, very science specific. And we'll go into what that looks like in a moment. Then we have every student really needs to take three uh, lower and three upper liberal. So there's a component that is really the breadth and depth um, outside of your professional requirements. It's something outside of that. Um, and then in your senior years, um, you have your professional and professionally related. And this is where you really get to diversify um, your education and align it with your professional interests. So I'll just have Bianca click click that space bar um, just to give you a little bit of a snapshot. I don't want you to get too overwhelmed with all the possibilities because really um, there are a lot of great possibilities in specializing or tailoring your curriculum. So of course there's the seven courses that you need if you want to be a registered dietitian. Um, if you're interested in research and those post-grad options, there are um, or we offer a concentration in nutrition health research. Um, if you want to click it again, great. We have uh, 49 different minors. I hope the number is still 49. It was, what was the last time I checked. Um, and that is just a, a diverse group of six courses that you can complement your degree with. Um, and then through continuing education, which is a separate kind of school, they offer such great cert, uh, certificates. And a lot of our students take advantage of food security certificate, um, proficiency in French certificate, um, a lot of really specific types of certificates. So um, we are gonna move into sort of the first couple of years, um, which looks like this. This is directly from the calendar, which is the best thing to look at. It's giving you the course names, the descriptions, and sort of how it's going to look and feel for you in the next couple of years. And you will notice that there are um, uh, a focus on science, so general chem, organic, food science, the physiology, um, the nutrition courses. So you've got all the FNN courses in that series there. And then we have this really nice pocket of research um, so in terms of diversity, you're, you're really getting a, a research focus within the first couple of years. Um, and then, as I said, you can branch out into those areas that um, you're more interested in as you develop professionally. So um, this is just sort of an overview. We get a lot of questions about how does it look, um, uh, our class, our in-class labs and simulations. Um, a big question is, is you know, are, are the labs in class? And um, for now, for, for winter term, they will be in class labs. Um, so to maintain the integrity, we, we are uh, keeping our beautiful lab space for students to experience and learn. Um, and then outside of all the professional things that you need to really get into because that's the way that you're, um, career will, will move. We have a wonderful opportunity within the curriculum to explore experiential opportunities. Um, so there's interdisciplinary courses, there are exchange programs. Um, as you can see there, we have France and Australia have been our partners for some time. Um, and don't worry, even with the COVID uh, restrictions, there's a lot of innovation in global learning and, and connecting to sort of outside best of the Ryerson world. So um, this is really the academic sort of component of it. And we really thought what would um, be best would be for an actual student who's living and breathing the curriculum uh, to share her experience. And I'm so happy to um, pass it over to Bianca uh, to do the latter part of the presentation. So thank you so much. Thank you, Zaina. Um, hello again, everyone. So yeah, the, uh, the program's like amazing. Um, uh, I don't know if many of you are trying to become an RD or registered dietitian, but this is why I'm also in the program. And it's uh, like amazing. Like not only do you learn 
the dietetics side of nutrition, but you also learn different components that can really help you um, expand like your prof professional experience, like um, food science components, uh, you learn about food security, and a lot of uh, socio-cultural aspects that you might not get from other schools. So I really like that. Um, during my first year, I also like courses such as um, physiology. So like the first and second physiology class, I found that very interesting. Um, you learn more about like um, the chemistry, the biology, and the physical functions in a living system. Um, I also like the intro to professional practice too, because we explore different areas of nutrition. So um, it's a very, very diverse curriculum, which I really, really enjoy. And you learn how to be adaptable and learn how to um, learn in different ways, study in different ways. And it's really great to, um, it's a close knit program. So it's really nice to make friends there. And it's so supportive too. So I really recommend um, uh, joining us here. Uh, yeah, like it's wonderful. And um, speaking of experiential highlights, um, while we're on that topic, um, there's many opportunities on Ryerson to expand and enhance your skill sets. And of course, as a student, I know that uh, focusing on academics is crucial, but it's also very important for you to explore your interests, broaden your skills, and as well as make valuable connections while you're here. So Ryerson has many different ways as you can get involved, as I mentioned before. Um, for example, you can join um, Nutrition Course Union, uh, which represents the nutrition students and they plan events and they're amazing. Um, you can be part of like the opportunities that uh, they hold and um, you can also join things such as the uh, Good Food Center. So the Good Food Center is really great as well. Uh, what they do is they alleviate um, food insecurity and you can volunteer there and learn more about that aspect. And I know that the examples here are more um, nutrition related, but there are many, many unique um, groups and associations on campus that you can resonate with as well. And um, Ryerson also has a multitude of opportunities for professional development. So here are just some of the examples that are mentioned. So um, if you want to find a, career, a, a campus job that supports your professional development, Career Boost is one of the ones I recommend. So that's the program that I'm in. And, um, I'm really grateful for all the experiences at, that I've cultivated so far. Um, not only do you learn like one aspect of nutrition, so now I'm learning more about like administration. I'm learning about like like logistics when it's when you're planning events, and um, there's just so many like broad opportunities here. And if you want more lab or um, research experience, you could try to help out in the nutrition discovery labs or even the next lab. Um, a lot of people that are um, going into uh, the registered dietitians route, they also do this as well, just to get um, their foot in the door with um, research experience. Um, or if you want more hands-on experience on sustainable and urban agriculture, I um, recommend also uh, visiting the site on Urban Farm, they're really great too. So um, these examples are just a tiny bit of what Ryerson has to offer. And these opportunities will give you valuable insight on the possible careers at, that will help you um, find your interests. And speaking of careers, um, you might have the big question of what can I do with this degree? And the answer is many things. So you could first pursue more education. So as you can see on the screen here, there's a lot of different educational pathways. So for example, you may choose the PM DIP program, which is the internship in the middle here, and that's the dietetic internship. Or alternatively, you could apply to the Masters of Nutrition Communication program at Ryerson, which also involves a dietetic component as well. Or if you want to enhance your knowledge and gain more experience in the food industry, that's also a really good um, choice to go to. Or some people even uh, go to other like related areas, like they either go to medicine or environmental studies. Their positive, the possibilities are pretty much endless for this. And also there's um, diverse career sectors as well. So we've had many alumni that have been or have become registered dietitians in the clinical, public health and community settings. And with this degree, you can also either become a food scientist, recipe developer, a nutritional health researcher, nutrition or go into nutrition marketing or many more. 
Um, some alumni that we know, uh, actually one of them works as a senior manager right now for Food Rescue at Second Harvest. Um, another person is an engagement coordinator for Ryerson Urban Farm. And some work as professors actually in the department now and or, and or contract lecturers as well. And it's not just limited to nutrition specific roles. Uh, you gain a lot of transferable skills during your undergrad here and that can be applied to um, other fields. So there's many career options and uh, I don't think you'll regret your time here at Ryerson if you come join us. And I think that concludes my part. Zaina, you can uh, go ahead with the admissions requirements, which people might be interested in. Thank you, Bianca. That was wonderful. Um, admission requirements are uh, posted online under the admissions website. Um, and we um, typically say, we don't typically say, the admission requirements are your six 12U courses, okay? Three of which have to be English, chemistry, and biology. So um, if you're working towards your 12U courses, that's what admissions is looking for, your top six courses, and uh, specifically English, chemistry, and biology. Um, you'll see here on our website or on the website in the calendar, um, that there is, you know, um, it says it will benefit you. It will be in your interest um, to take social sciences, humanities courses, family studies, um, mathematics, data, uh, data management. Um, these are not looked at. They're not scored. It's, it's the uh, transferable skills that will add value once you're a first year student. Um, so as it says there, it's recommended, but it's not part of the six in which um, you, you can choose to take any six. And if you decide, those could be uh, beneficial to you. Um, it does say the typical average is 70%. That is sort of the benchmark. Um, and then what happens is it, it really depends on the pool of students that are applying in. Um, so every year they have sort of a, a number or a percentage um, that is competitive and really difficult to forecast for, um, or it's impossible to forecast because it depends on the population. So of course we would encourage you to do well in, um, or hope you have interest in chemistry and biology, because that's really the, the base of the first couple of years um, and um, you know, support you in, in, in meeting the requirements. So we'll go to the next slide. Um, Melissa Reed is our specific senior admissions officer. Um, so a lot of the information is on the website. Um, however, if you do have a very specific question that's outside of that, maybe um, you don't have the prerequisites or um, something that's very specific getting in your way of completing that application, um, you're welcome to contact uh, Melissa for admission related inquiries. Um, and transfer credits. I don't know if we took a poll of how many people are coming right from high school or how many are coming with post-secondary education. Typically, we've had sort of a 60-40 split of high school and, and post-secondary. Um, Bianca, as we mentioned, has it was a graduate from a post-secondary. So um, we do work really hard with students to maximize your credits. Um, and we do work with you once upon acceptance or your offer of um, acceptance to utilize or maximize your, your post-secondary credits um, and match them up to our curriculum. And there is a 20 transfer max. So you do have to complete at least half of the degree, which is always the case because of our accredited courses, okay? Um, the next thing here is thank you. Wow. <laughs> um, we, we're, we're so excited to have you sort of just get a little glimpse of what our program is about. Um, we wish that we could have you on campus to give you tours and so on, and that will happen um, soon in the future. Um, we want to welcome you to all of your decision making um, and really, you know, get the feel of it. One of the things that we often say for our nutrition program is the fact that we are downtown Toronto, and that makes a big impact on decision making. 
Um, so whatever program you're interested in, whatever, um, you know, the variables that impact your decision, wish you the best, the most support, and please reach out um, if you do need any support in, in that decision-making process. Thank you, Saina. Um, there were some questions uh, that came in that would be awesome if you could answer them live. And one of them was about being a registered dietitian. A lot of them came up with that particular question. So do you mind go, go over into this topic with more detail about how one becomes a registered dietitian and how this program can help them get there? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, Dietitians of Canada is its own regulating body, okay? And they say, so if you go to the Dietitians of Canada website and you click on the top there, become a dietitian, they're going to give you the three steps really that it takes to becoming a dietitian. Step number one is completing an accredited undergraduate degree. So that's a, um, we have Ryerson, Guelph, and Brescia, um, which are the ones in Ontario that are the most comparable because it's an undergraduate degree that's accredited and and um, all programs are wonderful all programs are accredited and meet the standard um, it's really the sort of philosophy of each school that differs um, so do your research of the town and the curriculum and how that looks and where you resonate more I, I would say would be your best match um, in terms of the accreditation of the undergraduate degree. So that's number step one. Um, step two is applying for a separate um, training program. So the practicum, it's a, called a practicum training program. So what we're doing here is it's kind of split up in two categories. There are internships, which are part of Ryerson's PM DIP. So they sort of work with hospitals to provide the practical training required for that second step of becoming a dietitian. You're taking all that knowledge um, and you're applying it um, in the three different areas, clinical, food service, and the public sector. That, that step is competitive as well. Like, you know, getting into this program is competitive um, and that second step is competitive. There's limited post-grad programs that are combined like uh, Bianca was saying, we have our nutrition and communication post-grad program. It combines the practicum with that extra education. And that is part of the two, step number two. You need one of those, internship or combined program. And then once you get through that, you're golden and you're going to apply all of that to a final test and examination, uh, which you complete. Again, this is all through uh, registered uh, dietitians of Canada. They are the governing bodies of, of that uh, designation. So I hope that's clear. And if it's not, I would highly encourage you to look, whether it's an RD or whether it's um, any kind of post-grad program, look at their program. Find, just like you're doing for your undergrad, you wanna look at that post-grad program, see what they're looking for, and then sort of work your way backwards. Amazing, thank you. This question is more for Bianca. And I know Bianca, you've already started to talk about this a little bit, but can you walk us through a day in the life of a nutrition student and, and what that might be like, you know, in, in a pre before a COVID world and in a post COVID world? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'll just try to recall my last semester when I was on campus. So uh, I don't know about if anyone here is going to be commuting. So first thing is I would commute uh, get to the Ryerson campus, uh, I would go to the different facilities such as the SLC or um, the cool new DC building where all most of the nutrition classes are um, and study there. There's a lot of different study spaces. So um, uh, yeah, usually bef I would get there early. Um, I would spend a lot of time studying before and after class just because um, university content is a bit uh, heavier and you're going to have to put more time outside of class than you would in class. Uh, so yeah, I would do that. Um, usually I had one or two classes a day. So I actually really, really um, enjoyed the schedule for um, first year because 
there was only like one or two three hour classes which were very manageable and then you had time in between to study or you can eat or hang out with friends um there's also a lot of like opportunities on campus like if there's like any events going on you can go um to those in the evening or even like during your breaks um and there's a lot of food places of course um what else should i talk about uh sorry <laughs> i'm just trying to think of what it was like pre-covid times um yeah and yeah just getting home i would again study um and also during the daytime you can also join uh your club activities as well so that's also fun that builds your professional development and um i think for covid times it's mostly just being online like you're going to be using this um, website called d2l some high schools i think use that right now and uh, most of your content is online and i think the difference if you do end up going into online learning in comparison to class is that there's more things to just keep on top of just because you're not in class like it's not really a reminder that you're in class you're there to study you kind of have to um, keep that in your mind for yourself and yeah, um, I hope that answers the question, but go ahead and ask further questions in case uh, my rambling wasn't, <laughs> wasn't um, a good explanation. That was great, that was great. Thank you, Bianca. Um, this one is uh, well, career opportunities. And I, I know, Sina, you already talked about it a little bit, but can you tell us more about where some of the graduates end up working um, when they're not working as a registered dietitian? Somebody asked about food security, um, so they're asking if they can get into it with that, but are there other places that they end up working at? Yes, thank you so much. I think that um, there's kind of this bit of a misconception that um, the program Nutrition and Food at Ryerson is, you know, uh, dietetic. Um, I think there's a lot of interest and initially, uh, usually when I do this live, you know, we get a show of hands of how many people want to be a dietitian. And it's usually 95% that put up their hand. Um, so we, we get that that's sort of what dr is drawing most people into the program. Um, but you'll really discover that through the curriculum, you get the opportunity to develop and uh, discover your personal interests. And I really think that um, being in tune with that and taking that on leads to you selecting your courses and, you know, your minor and your um, certificates, anything that's going to complement that. But it's really through that, that each person is deciding or, or discovering that this is their area within nutrition and food that they are in love with. And, you know, a lot of people are just so set uh, towards being a dietitian, and then they do a little bit of work at a hospital like a little bit of a volunteer opportunity at a hospital and then they're like i absolutely never want to work in a hospital day in and day out um so i think the beauty of the program is that it offers you some experiential opportunities to discover what you like and then from that place um i really don't want to not say or say all of the opportunities um, but it's like carving your niche within that sector that you're interested in. So if you are into research and you love that, then you can always go on to postgrads and work in government and policy and that sort of side of it. Um, if you're more like there's so many of our students that love communications, especially with technology and social media. So they're really amplifying that communications piece to it, which is huge. Um, we have a grad that works at Ryerson, you know, a recent grad we just had an interview with, you should uh, check out the interview where he sort of took on all of the opportunities um, at Ryerson to engage and experience. Um, and he realized he wants to support sort of the back end to support all students in health and wellness. Um, there's the private sector, there's the public sector, there's um, so many different food service has a lot of opportunities, development, the back end of food service. Um, really, the, the slide that Bianca showed uh, there has a lot of the different sectors. And then if you go to our website, you can uh, look it click down and below each sector are actual um, position titles that our grads have uh, that have, you know, um, so I think it's quite diverse. I think it depends on each person. 
um, and which area you really want to open up into. Great, thank you. Thank you, Sana. It's really good to have those concrete examples. Um, another question that came in, it asked, where is school nutrition located? So, but I wanna use this question as a segue for us to talk about the facilities, the incredible new, you know, like state of the art facilities that you're in because, you know, they're, they're worth talking about because they're so, so, so nice and I'm jealous and I'm not there every day. So first tell us about where it is, but also tell us about it. And perhaps Bianca, you can also tell us a little bit about, about it because I get excited just thinking about how, how great it is. So I'll, I'll let you both take over that one. Okay, I'll start. Um, I don't know if anyone has been to Ryerson. Um, our, our previous facility was in the was sort of the uh, quad, so the older part, the older building, the original building of Ryerson. Um, and to compare that lab space, like I'm not talking about the classrooms, I'm talking about the actual food lab. We had, we had two rooms there and it was literally from the seventies. Like it was like, you go, I, I don't know if they've torn it down yet, but it's beautiful. Everything's, uh, you know, so old school and from the seventies. Um, so we recently last year in August, 2019, wasn't it? Yeah. We, we moved into this brand new facility. Um, and so you can look it up online. It's um, the Daphne Cockwell Health Science, what's it called, Danny? Uh, <laughs> Daphne Cockwell Complex, I think. Yes, there we go, Daphne DTC, Cockwell that's Complex. what I know. Yeah, <laughs> Thank <health> you. <laughs> wow, it was a mouthful. Um, so really what the highlight was, was uh, recreating the food lab. So all I'm going to say was that there was a lot of time and effort in creating, as you said, Danny, a state of the art facility. Um, we haven't had a lot of experience in the space um, because we moved in in August and then we moved out in, in, in March. Um, however, it is amazing. So the group coming in, especially for 21 and, and beyond, um, will we'll really get to um, uh, appreciate the equipment and the technology that goes into uh, nutrition and food. And I'm going to hand it over to Bianca because I think, did you get to go in that space? Oh, no, uh, for DCC, of course, I hang out there yeah, all the yeah. time. Did you have did you <laughs> food lab in, in the second? Oh, year? yes. Oh, for anyone that's going into the first, uh, um, going to be in our first year, for next year, um, oh, you'll love the food labs. You'll love doing the food labs there, cooking there. Like it's the state of the art facilities. Like, oh, it's just so nice, um, so clean and so spacious. Um, even like the whole building itself, like the way it's designed has like a lot of different spaces where you can just like sit and hang out. And um, also the study rooms as well. I believe the DCC study rooms are only available to FCS students, which include nutrition students. So we have our own designated um, study rooms there that you can book yourself, which is great. Um, the classes are also very spacious and nice. Like everything's kind of new and it's like all clean and I love it. It's great. Oh, and also when you get to check out the School of Nutrition office, that place is really nice as well. Thank you, Bianca. Thank you, Sina. That, that's good. Like it, it got me excited all over again. I'm so excited for when we go back to, for when we get to go back there. And also, just so you know, if you go if you go through the nutrition food program, you'll be eating a lot, a lot. There's a lot of food involved. You'll be cooking it. You'll be trying your colleagues' food. I went to um, I, I visited a few of the classrooms, and I was always well fed in the in the nutrition and food program. So definitely get excited for that. Um, I think it'd be good for us to hear. So the questions, there's a few questions coming in. Let's see if there's any, anything that we need to answer live. Um, so is it mark-based or are there additional components? I believe it is mark-based. Is that correct? Marks only? Yep. Um, yes, grades so, only. Grades only. And sometimes the question comes up like high school. So High school students are being compared to high school students. All the grades are important. Um, and then for the 105s or for the students that come in with post-secondary education, their high school grades are also compared and they're post-secondary. Um, so there is a, you know, a, a, a structure and a scoring mechanism and um, uh, yeah, but it's grades only. 
amazing. Thank you. I think this was more for Bianca. Um, let's talk about your labs right now. So while we're hopeful that we get to go back on campus next year, right? Fingers crossed. Um, there are people that are curious about um, what do labs look like in a virtual space? Have you had any labs this year by any chance? Oh yes, actually I have had one for biochemistry. So that is a second year course. Um, basically, oh, and also I think the general chem organic chemistry as well. Um, like the last few weeks we had it um, online. But what they're going to do, instead of you actually doing the experiments, they're going to run through what um, the experiment should have been, and they give you unknowns. So basically, you're just supposed to plug in unknowns with what you know about the experiment. Like, don't worry, they'll like run it through uh, it with you. And then um, you just kind of have to apply calculations. Um, there's still like uh, lab session sessions where you um, attend where a TA will explain all the information that you need to know and they're going to be there for you um, like during the three hours just to go over like any questions you have. So that's basically it. So basically, yeah, you just don't have that physical component of like for chemistry actually like um, mixing things or like mixing chemicals around. Um, it's just you are given unknowns, you're given what to do and yeah, they just mark lab reports. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. No um, first year, there's people that are asking about how hands on is the first year? You know, are there a lot of labs? Do you spend a lot of time cooking? Um, if you happen to remember, because I know it might be a little while, Bianca, since it might seem like a little <laughs> while since times. you did it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what I recall from my first ever semester, it wasn't as hands-on except for general chemistry where you do some uh, basic experiments. I think a lot of people said that it's similar to um, grade 12. So for those that are coming out of high school, you'll have an easier transition for those. Um, yeah, so that was the, sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> Just a sense of your, your first year, how hands-on oh, was yeah. it? You go, do you get to cook? That kind of thing. Oh, yes. So um, oh, it, for second semester, um, there's this cl class FND 100. That's food science one. And in that class, yes, you do get to cook. Um, it's more of like a scientific way, though. Like you do get to cook things like bread. You get to bake. Um, yeah, bake custards. Uh, you get to make pudding. You can make mayonnaise by hand. Um, there's also what else was fun. Um, you can make yogurt as well. So it is hands on in that aspect for that one particular class. And what I really liked about the class as well is that when you're doing those hands on applications, like you kind of apply what you learn in class. And I think that was a really, like, really interesting class. It was one of my favorites. But yeah, um, hands on more second semester, first semester, not as much more theory based. So it sounds like the first semester was more about building the foundation. And then the second semester, you, you got to put all that foundation into practice. Cool. OK, thank you. Uh, class sizes, what, were you, what have been your class sizes like? And I think this is a good sense. This is a good one for both of you. So perhaps, Bianca, you can tell us what it's been like so far. And Sana, you can tell us what it looks like in the later years of the program, maybe. So particularly for my cohort, um, I believe it's around 100 20 to 130 students per class. So not super small, but not very large either. Like it's good enough for you to get to know like most of your peers, um, but there are tutorials and labs as well. And those ones are going to be smaller class sizes. So those are usually like 30 people I'd assume or even smaller, but yeah. So labs and tutorials are smaller, 30 people and the bigger lectures like for PLN 103, which is physiology, it's going to be um, your, most of your class that's there um, or some people as well from other programs, but usually just nutrition students. Yes, um, I was just gonna say that um, I one of the, one of the um, benefits or things that are unique about our program in terms of the first year. Uh, Bianca, I don't know if you could put it back on to the first couple of years slide, just so we could look at the actual curriculum. Um, you'll notice the 
there's two chemistry courses, general chemistry and organic chemistry. Um, so those two courses are taught by chemistry. They're not included within the nutrition program. They're taught by chemistry. Um, and they're only for nutrition students. So that often is a question of, you know, am I doing a general chemistry with all the, all the science students? No, this is chemistry for nutrition. So it's quite tailored. Um, and as Bianca said, the courses that have labs like general chemistry, organic chemistry, food science, and FMP 100, it, it kind of works like this. But think of it as like the content is pretty dense in nature because it's like a science-based course. So they will, they will do maybe an hour lecture and they'll split up that three hours into two. So you'll have an hour and then you'll go into a two hour. Um, so the content is split up. And that's with your 100 students. Like, you know, our incoming is about 150 students, let's say. And maybe some of them will have transfer credit. So we're, you're looking at about 130 students in that first year cohort. Um, so the lectures will be all uh, collective. And then when you go into your labs, as Bianca said, then you're working with this, you know, a quarter of, of the groups. So you're working about 30 of them. And that's where it becomes really intimate because you get to, know your student body through those different labs. Another thing I just wanted to make note of is Bianca was speaking about her current biochemistry class that she's in and that that component of the lab is done virtually. So for your cohort coming in, any interested students for um, fall 21, uh, we've, we've taken out biochemistry. So I don't want you to get confused. The biochemistry you'll see there in the, in the second year um, has been integrated into some of our other courses. Um, so the lab, virtual labs, will occur for general chemistry if, if we're still in that situation, and organic chemistry. Um, that's how chemistry departments offering the labs in a virtual context uh, that Bianca explained. Um, and our labs for School of Nutrition, like FND 100 and FNS 200, those are the two juicy courses that you get to use the food lab for. Um, those will be in person. The departments decided that um, they can't really do that component uh, virtually. So those will work with you on whatever the uh, l landscape looks like to fulfilling that in-person requirement. Great, thank you, Saina and Bianca. Um, People are really interested about the, the hands-on learning. They're saying, you know, like how often will it be in a lab? What's the ratio between hands-on learning and just academic learning? Lots and lots of questions about that. Um, do you mind providing more details around that, that piece if you can, either one of you? I'm always looking to see Bianca if your microphone goes off first. Um, <laughs> just about I, I absolutely don't mind um, sharing that. You know, let's go back to what the program's called. It's a Bachelor of Applied Science. So we are so fortunate to have the applied component to it. So this shows up in the curriculum in the first couple years as the labs we're talking about, whether it's uh, general chemistry, organic chemistry labs, um, or it's the food lab. So, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at one, two, three, four courses that have that lab component in your first 20. So if you want to look at it like that. Um, and integrated into the courses, so those are like lab, lab extra to the three hour uh, lectures. Um, and integrated into some of our courses, for example, FMP 100, that's a three hour lecture. Um, and it breaks out into seminar groups. So experiential is not only, you know, food and, and experimenting with the outcomes of, of different scientific things. I don't know much about uh, the science side of it. Um, and it's also integrating the experiential component of professional practice. So being with others. Um, and that, that uh, component is a running theme throughout the curriculum. So you'll see it professional practice in the first year. You'll see it um, in the third and the fourth years as distinctive courses as well. Um, professional practice in communications, professional practice in 
um, dietetics and, and working with the counseling component. Um, so I think when we're talking about applied, it, it really depends on what your definition of it is. Um, mm -hmm. But there are so many opportunities in our curriculum that where you're actually reaching out into a real life experience and applying food, food service, for example, FNS 400 in your senior year, you're literally reaching out into the community and applying um, some solution that's, you know, graded and evaluated and so on. So um, I love the curriculum for the applied aspect. And I think that it's part of the learning. It's part of the retention of this, of this curriculum is really getting to experience it at that level. I'd also like to add in too that um, usually like uh, courses like chemistry, uh, yeah, most of the courses, if they have a lab component, it's like the same amount of time as the lecture. So you would get like three hours of lecture and then three hours of, um, of the lab or practical experience uh, or application. So um, I would say on there is more of a theoretical aspect for some courses, but really I, I find that it was um, relatively equal. Thank you, Bianca, and thank you, Saina. A really specific question came up um, for Bianca. Out of all the classes from the first year, which was your favorite? Out of all the classes, um, I actually really liked, um, I think I mentioned it previously, FND 100. Um, so that's food science again. Uh, so food science, there's, I'm not gonna lie, it's, there's a lot to learn in that one because you're applying like chemistry, you're applying like a lot of like physics or biology to um, like learning about why food is the way it is like why does it react this way why is it solid in this form like it makes you think about food in a different way and when you're cooking you're like oh like um they're hydrogen bonding because and this is why it's like sticky or something so it's really interesting like it makes uh, like gave me a new perspective on how I think about food and when I watch cooking shows and they're doing something I'm like okay uh the reason why they're baking it or like they're um uh like kneading the dough is because uh, of this uh, aspect of it. So I really liked it because like it taught me a different perspective. And uh, I think that was something that I never really thought I would do. Like I was thinking mostly because again, I want to go into registered dietetics. I was thinking mostly about like food in the nutritional health aspect, like how does it affect your body, uh, like your health. But that class like gave me like like, I don't know, it was just like a great uh, experience. Uh, like it gave me a lot of insight to uh, food and like more of the, like um, the processing aspect. So I would say that that's my favorite class from first year. I just wanna add to that if, if I can for the food science. Um, I know Bianca mentioned some of the experiments that they do, but every cohort except for this one, but every cohort, um, the, the class prepares with Dr. Yuen. She's our food scientist and she's very passionate. Um, and the class prepares jams, the blueberry uh, raspberry jams, and they prepare um, pickled beets and they sometimes prepare um, the beans and they really go through the quality, the qu quality food, um, um, inspection and management of it, like at, a, at the scientific level, and the the produce or the the um, the products. So they'll make this all this jam and pickled beets are the best, um, and then they'll sell it. And every year, FCS gets this email, like all the faculty and staff and students, to like who wants to buy it, and everybody's running to buy it, and then all the proceeds go to the community food room that Bianca mentioned, one of our. Um, food security supports at Ryerson for students. So there are really neat um, opportunities for community within courses that I think is really nice about the program in terms of um, you know, supporting the whole idea of the curriculum in terms of community and health and service. Um, so that is just an example from the food science course. Amazing, thank you, Saina.
Awesome. Thank you so much to our presenters um, for being here today. And of course, Danny, for jumping on and asking those questions and, you know, getting our uh, students engaged with us. This was a really amazing presentation, lots of really great information. Uh, so we have about five minutes left on the hour. Uh, what's going to happen now is we are going to be turning off our cameras um, and we'll turn off our audio as well. So we will remain online until all of our questions are answered. So if you do have any final questions, please feel free to throw them into the Q&A pod and we'll do our best to answer those as quickly as possible. Um, so thank you again so much for joining us. As I mentioned at the beginning of the session, this is being recorded, but the Q&A pod will not be a part of that, um, of that recording. So if you got any amazing answers, please feel free to take a picture or screenshot or make note of them. Um, and if you have any other questions, like I mentioned, throw them in now and we'll get to them as quickly as possible. Um, other than that, feel free to check out our website. Um, we have some more events happening next week as well as a few more happening uh, throughout the day today. Um, and again, thank you so much for joining us on, on behalf of Ryerson University. We hope that you and your loved ones are staying safe and healthy and we hope to see you again in the future. Have a great day, everyone.